Hello and welcome to the video. This video is about this thing here. This went on the Atom RC website. I think it was Tuesday, Wednesday last week. Uh, this is the new Atom RC Penguin. Terrible name, but a really interesting plane. So I've managed to get my hands on one. So thank you to Atom RC for sending me one to get my mitts on. Uh, this time we're just going to look at how it comes in the box. Go through some of the features and what I found out about it. Plug it in quickly into iNav. Uh, this one does come with a flight controller. So this is similar to the Swordfish and the Dolphin, those variants that are available. Uh, this one, everything is on little screws. Uh, it does have the same flight controller in there that was in the Swordfish and Dolphin. Uh, and I'm kind of interested to see how this flies. It is a bit of a goofy looking thing. It's like a, a wingsuit design. And I think it was Jazz FPV that said it looks like the Ranger T1 and the Dolphin had a love child. Um, I nearly spat my tea all over the keyboard when I read that. Thank you, Jazz, for that. Uh, but that's a kind of exactly what it looks like. It's twin. Um, FPV camera mounts in the nose for analog and for digital. Uh, it comes with flight controller or without flight controller. There's three different ways to get it. Um, there's some really cool features. There's no rudder, but there is an elevator at the back. Um, underneath... Uh, it has quick release wings with little catches, navigation lights, and even little catches that come off the ESC so you can get to them easily. So there's some really interesting stuff here. And Atom RC do definitely seem to uh, be burning the midnight oil coming up with some cool stuff. Now for me, calling it a penguin doesn't do it any favours at all. Uh, they obviously are sticking with the kind of marine life thing because they've got the swordfish. Fab plane, dolphin, fab plane, uh, killer whale, the seal. Uh, they've had a number of other ones. Uh, for me, I don't think this should be called a dolphin. I think it should be called something like a hammerhead or a stingray. If it had a whippy tail sticking out the back, it looks more like a stingray than it does a penguin. And somebody did mention, oh, penguin, isn't that a flightless bird? And while that's absolutely true, uh, all of the other planes that are named after things that don't fly, swordfish, dolphin, etc., actually fly pretty well. So while I show you how this comes in the box, it's a very, very big box because the body itself uh, is the majority of the thing. Uh, these wings are pretty stubby. Wingspan on this penguin is 750 millimeters. The length is 640 millimeters. The wing area is a pretty decent 15.06 decimeters squared material is epp servos in here and everything's already connected we have uh, strengthening in the ailerons uh, these are actually digital metal geared servos and all the geometry seems nicely set up on both of these the motors on this are 2204-2206 style um, they have a 30 amp 4s uh, ESC in here and the running D shot. Uh, this is the canopy that you can pop on if you don't want to mount an action camera. There is already a canopy on it. We'll get to that in a moment. The recommended propellers are six by 2.4 inch and the recommended battery is 2,000 or 3,000 milliamp hours. This is the separate nose cone. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in a minute. This is an injection molded plastic piece. It feels quite tough. Designed for modern FPV systems. Hallelujah. It's designed so that you can mount your HDFPV system, whether that's warp snail, DJI, HD0, whatever, and slide it into the back and then screw it onto the front of the model. The other nose is this one. This is the standard nose that fits at the front for standard cameras and is held in place by magnets. That is the hatch for the flight controller, as I've just shown in the introduction. Item weight is 1.6 kilograms and the package itself is 60.3 by 39.2 by 14 centimeters. These are the V-tails. Uh, they go in and are actually held in place with clips. There's no screws. Uh, you just push these home and there's a very uh, little click, click as the front and back engage and then they're secured. Main features on this is the fact that we have the dual props and then we have the magnetic nose that has the options to have the different noses installed but also an open nose which is great for ventilation for those HD systems that run quite hot and it also has nav light. Now this one has the flight controller and the GPS is at the side. There are covers in the kit that goes over that piece. 
the flight controller, as we'll see, is actually installed backwards. That actually makes a lot of sense for the way this is laid out. Navigation lights, uh, mine did uh, get a little bit of rash, unfortunately, in the shipping. Uh, just that little bit, and that's probably come from the carbon fiber spar that goes through the wings. And then we have the elevator at the back. Again, another digital Metal Gear servo, and the geometry is set up. It's all beautifully set at 90 degrees. So it looks like they've actually put a bit of work into making sure this is going to be decent from the factory. Battery bay is a reasonable size too. Lots of things, extra things in here, like the screws that you're going to need, your battery strap and other pieces. And then under that is the bone pieces that you're going to need. Those are the covers. They are directional. They will only fit in those sides one way round. We'll put those on in a second. And then you have the cable that goes from the DJI port on the flight controller that can connect to your HD system up at the front. Last couple of pieces are the props, and then at the very bottom of the box, we have the carbon spar, which is there for reinforcement of the wings. Manual isn't bad. It actually does tell you where everything needs to plug in. Uh, I would have liked some information here about the throws, struggling to find that in the quick look I've had, uh, but there is CG marks molded into the underside of the wing, and there is a sheet of decals too. In terms of putting it together, it's really straightforward and easy. Uh, it's toolless once you have installed a couple of extra pieces. There are latches that need to go in the wing roots that aren't installed by default. Use the longest self-tapping screws. You get four of them in the kit and you need to put one on each side. Once those are in place, then you can slide the wings home and they will click into position with the carbon fiber spar. Putting the carbon fiber spar through, I wouldn't do this until you have fitted those little beige clips. Just be careful because it does go around lots of wires in the middle of the body. But that's a single carbon fiber spar that provides the rigidity out into the wings. Once you've done that, then you can just slide the wings over the carbon fiber spar. There is a nice little channel cut to take the servo lead. And then when you have the clips, on the body, they'll just clip into place. Install on the tail is very simple. You just install them by pushing them home. Again, there'll be a nice solid click noise because the plastics that are part of the LED nav lights actually hold onto it. So the tail is kind of sandwiched between this kind of V-tail vertical stabilizer arrangement and the LEDs below. And it's just a case of putting the hatches on. The hardest thing is just cutting these pieces off the foam that go over both the GPS and also the other side uh, for whatever you want to use it for. Again, they only go in one way round. Just make sure you absolutely want them where they are. I use a little dab of glue, to be honest, once I've built this out, uh, but they are designed to just fit one way round. It'll be obvious if you've got it the wrong way. Plugging it into iNav is interesting. Again, this is their own version of the flight controller that you could get in things like the uh, dolphin and also the swordfish. It's shipped with iNav 6.0. Uh, I'm going to flash it and update it for the Maiden uh, to 6.1.1. Calibration has been done. The mixer is set up. Interestingly, the mixer is set for both motors to use the same output. So there's no differential thrust, which I think is a good idea. I don't think it's worked very well in iNav. Configuration, outputs are turned on, D-shot for the motors. There is a little bit of trimming, uh, potentially, uh, in the outputs, but we'll check all that when I do the full build-out. Ports tab, we have the serial stuff set on UART2. Uh, by default, it's set for CRSF, as we'll see in a minute, but you can also do it for SBUS. GPS is set up in there as well. Configuration tab, nothing really too exciting in here. Interestingly, the flight controller is set for 180 degrees yaw. It's actually backwards, but that actually works well for this model and perfectly okay to do it that way. And the mag alignment has been flipped around too. So both the compass and the flight controller are mounted in a slightly odd way. Number of other things that aren't set here that I personally would, continuously trim servos is turned on, enable launch mode for fixed wing isn't. I potentially would turn air mode on as well for a plane. Failsafe is set to return to home. P 
PID tuning looks pretty standard to me. I'm not really seeing a lot in here that's uh, really calling out that this has been tuned to within an inch of its life. These roll and pitch rates look completely bonkers. Um, so I think we'll definitely have to do an auto tune and we'll see what those actually are when I've set this up and flown it, but they just look completely wacky. That's a very, very aggressive pitch degrees per second value. In the advanced tuning, again, the way that the auto launch is set up, I would set it up completely differently. See my auto launch videos. The settings here aren't terrible, but I would tweak them slightly. Uh, there is a link in the manual to download the latest INAV configuration stuff. Set for CRSF by default on UART2, AETR standard layout. And then there are quite a few modes in here. And this, I don't think, is a, is a bad stab at how it could be set up. Personally, I like the three positions for a maiden flight to be horizon, manual, and acro. So I would probably tweak these as well. I have saved a diff all and a dump of this as it is supplied. If you're interested, I'll pop a link down below. The other thing, you know, there are definitely things here that need to be addressed that I would set up differently. Things like the AHRS inertia comp method is set to Velmed. It should be adaptive for a fixed wing rather than just Velmed. So it, this is definitely going to need some setting up. So as with the other two planes that I tried with the supplied F405 wing flight controller from AtomRC, the INAV configuration is not great. Um, I will probably share my INAV configuration once I've flown this and done a full flight review. I'll probably stick a default on there for you to have a look at and I'll update it to INAV 6.1.1. Uh, just to get all of the latest goodness in there too. The process that I'd follow to update this is exactly the same as the process that I used to update the version of the Dolphin that I've got in that has the same flight controller. I've actually made a whole video about how you do that. Again, link down below if you want to watch that. Um, it's not a particularly tricky process. I copy over things like the calibration of the accelerometer, a couple of other bits, and then basically set it up from scratch. There is a lot to like th about this. Uh, the more I look at this, the less goofy it's starting to look. I love the idea that there are lots of different options for FPV, both classic analog FPV, just held in place with good old magnets. But the thing I'm more excited about is the little cage that they've created for the HD FPV stuff. The idea that there's a little shelf that you can mount your avatar or your HD air unit or your HD zero or whatever. And then there's also a little piece above it that you can put your antennas into. And then that all slides into the nose cone. And then the nose cone is actually bolted using two large self-tapping screws onto the front of the plane is a really interesting idea. How well will it survive a crash? I don't know. I guess we're about to find out. But I think that is a really cool idea because it does mean that that part of the model is in lots of airflow and those things can get hot if you leave them in the sunshine. Don't ask me how I know. Metal geared servos are a nice addition, uh, particularly in the digital, probably run them at slightly higher speed in iNav. There are the protectors that go in front uh, for the bottom. I personally like servos that come out of the top of the wing. I think they're just less likely to get snagged on stuff as you land. Uh, coming out the bottom, okay, that's fine. But there are these little protectors which hopefully will mean that they don't get kiboshed on a landing. The latches for the wings are a really nice idea. I also quite like the idea that not only are these latches that click into place nice and positively, but there are a couple of spares in the box as well. In a nasty crash, these look like they would break. So having a couple of spares is gonna be handy. Hopefully Atom RC will also make them available as a cheap and cheerful spare. Uh, otherwise it's gonna make it tricky. Well, after a couple of damages and replacements, then you kind of gonna be, you're gonna need some extras in your box. Lots of room for your battery, lots of room for your radio receiver and a spare bay as well. Nice to have the GPS well out of the way of everything else. So with the HD system in the nose, with a receiver back here with the antenna sticking out protected by these V-tails and the GPS here, you have got space. So if you did want to put other things around, you absolutely have got the room. 
I do like some of the quirky little touches. The fact that the ESC hatches are removable and give you access to the ESC is kind of a cute little touch. It means that if you do need to get in there to replace it or you have an issue with one, that you're not having to dig around and cut foam to pieces. Um, that's quite a cute idea. Slightly odd coloured plastic, uh, this kind of nice blue colour, but I guess that's all part of the dolphin aesthetic. Details on the flight controller are in the manual, so it tells you exactly where everything should plug in, which is great. Again, I'll cover that when I've built mine out and we take it out for a maiden. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get that video up relatively quickly. And there are even battery weights in the website for how you can get onto your center of gravity. And I think that is a real valuable piece of information for those of us that always end up having to keep our fingers crossed and try and figure out what battery is going to fit. I always try and show the battery that I'm using when I do my maiden flights to give you an idea of the battery itself, but also the weight. Uh, but it's nice to have a starter for 10 from the website. I just wish there was more information about the throws that you needed on the ailerons and on that big elevator too. The only last thing to mention is when the props are fitted, they are quite long, they are going to easily extend below. I'm probably going to have to make sure that the brake is turned on on these ESCs, be able to do that with BL Heli Suite or BL Heli Configurator, that's going to be a quick and easy job. Uh, and that also means that for those of you that like the props to spin the other way, you can swap the props over and reverse both of those, so whichever way floats your boat, you can make that work. I'm fascinated to see how this actually flies, because it kind of is all wing. Um, it doesn't look particularly svelte from the side, hopefully you can kind of get a view of that. But if you look at how much wing there is for the weight of the model and the size of the body, there's an awful lot on here that's going to create lift. And I guess that's the reason why they claim it can fly so incredibly slowly. And I like smaller wings. You know, I was a massive fan of the ZOHD Dart, the original one, that 635 millimeter wing. Uh, this is a little bit bigger and obviously has a tail, but I like those planes that can float into the ground. It means that you can fly and land in much tighter spaces. And the fact it's the twin means the props are well out of the way of your FPV equipment too. So I will get this updated with iNav and then get it flying, get it tuned and we'll come back and have a proper look. But I thought it was interesting to get this out the box and show you what I've found so far. Um, this is definitely an interesting design from AtomRC and I hope it flies as well as the Dolphin and Swordfish does. Because if it does, then you know what? I don't care about the fact it looks a little bit goofy because I will be having a whale of a time looking at the FPV camera with a big stupid grin on my face. Let's hope that's what it is, and I'll see you in that next video where we'll give it a flight. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.